I wonder how many other places like this exist. There are dozens of them, all over the world. And somehow no one's ever found one before us. I don't think that's true. Oh? When I was at Abstergo, Vidic talked about silencing discoveries made by non-Templars. And I'm sure Abstergo has dug up plenty. The things they must know. Regretting throwing in with us? <laughs> no. Just looking forward to when we can finally trounce those bastards so I can dive into their archives. For the support of the glorious cause, I beg they will accept my most cordial thanks for this distinguished testimony of their approbation. But lest some unlucky event should happen, unfavorable to my reputation, I beg it may be remembered by every gentleman in the room that I, this day, declare with utmost sincerity, I do not think myself equal to the command I am honored with. Truly, there as is no pay, man better sir, suited I to the task. Sir, I beg leave to assure really? the Congress that I as no pecuniary several. consideration could have Charles prevented me Lee. to have accepted this arduous employment at the do expense I know of my you? domestic ease and happiness. I would not expect happiness. you to remember. <laughs> I do not wish to make any profit I want you to from meet. it. I will keep an exact account of my expenses. Sorry to pull you away Those, like that, I doubt not, they the will discharge, need and that is all I desire. To blows. Now, Connor, allow me to introduce you to our newly appointed Commander-in-Chief, George Washington. Ah, so you're the one who saved Sam and John at Lexington. It was the Patriots who did that. I merely lent support. As humble as he is brave, we could use more men like you. I'm sorry, but if you'll excuse me, I should attend to Charles over there. He looks none too happy about being passed over for command. It was good to meet you, Connor. Tell me you have news of Pitcairn. I'm told he's taken shelter in Boston, where he's guarded by a thousand redcoats. The only way you're gonna get at him is if we draw him out. And lucky for you, we're launching an offensive against the city in order to do just that. Israel Putnam has been given command of our forces. Present this to him and he'll provide whatever aid you require. You'll find him at the encampment on Bunker Hill. You have my thanks. No need. It's the least I could do. Pitcairn's a dangerous man. The sooner we're rid of him, the better. I would say the same of Charles Lee. Now that's an altogether different beast. Let us leave it for another day. Best you head to Boston, Connor. and state your business! I'm looking for Israel Putnam. On whose orders? Samuel Adams. Follow me. This is not Bunker Hill. Aye, it's Breeds. There's been some disagreement as to where we should encamp. Any news from Boston? The Tories aren't moving. And any time we try to press them, we lose a dozen men. I think Putnam and the others plan to assemble artillery on these hills. 
A good shelling might make the Red Coast rethink their strategy. And what of John Pitcairn? That bastard's the cagiest of the bunch. He's appeared time to time to taunt us or send regards by way of cannon fire. It's all right, though. He'll have what's coming to him soon enough. Putnam's just up ahead. You call me. I don't care much for your excuses, gentlemen. We should be building on Bunker Hill. Reeds is closer to the city, but it is also closer to their artillery! Our orders...
should you for what they have in material they lack in conviction and care but not us we have discipline we have order and most importantly we have passion we believe so maintain vigilance serve your ammo ensure a proper line of sight and above all else men do not fire until you see the whites of their eyes. Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> you did it. That was quite a speech. Lies, all of it, I'm afraid. Still, such words have carried us thus far. And what a pit card. He's left Boston. As I said, he would. And set up camp on Molten Hill. There's no good way to get out of it. Not with that maelstrom growing down below. I suppose you could circle around a bit. And wait for us to fit their ranks. There is no time. I will have a chance to direct approach. That's twice today you proposed the impossible. I see no other choice. Not because your man's a march here, son. I expect an apology on my return.
Why did you do this? To protect Adams and Hancock and those they serve. You meant to kill them. Kill them? Are you mad? I wanted only to parley. There was so much to discuss. To explain. Do you put an end to that now? If you speak true, then I will carry your last words to them. They must lay down their arms. They must stop this war. Why them and not the Redcoats? Do not think we ask the same question of the British. These things take time. And I would have succeeded had you let me play my part. Part of the puppeteer. For better we hold the strings on another. No, the strings should be severed. All should be free. And we should live forever on castles in the sky. You wield your blade like a man, but your mouth like a child. And more will die now because of that. Sahaju Janere ne o tēnā mta seta koe. Tini o ne jaho tēnā tamta seta koe. Same cannot be said for Pitcairn. Well done, I suppose. <laughs> but it matters little now. I'm ordering a full retreat. We have lost too many in exchange for too little. If the Tories want this hill so badly, let them have it. Boston is the true prize. We have a bigger problem. What do you mean? says they plan to murder Washington. 